If you know anything about casinos, you know about Harris. They, at the time of this recording, own 19 casinos under the Harris brand. And over time, they have acquired 32 other casinos all over the world, including Bally's, Caesars Palace, Horseshoe, The Flamingo, Link, Paris, and Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas. Nine in Britain and a bunch more. Yes, I'm doing another casino video. Quiet yourself and hear more about casinos. Story time. In 1937, some dude named Bill Hara opened a bingo parlor in Reno, Nevada, which would later become Harris Reno. In 1955, he expanded all the way to the tiny village of Stateline, Nevada, at the bottom of Lake Tahoe, where he would eventually open Harris Lake Tahoe. He called his company Harris Incorporated and made his first public listing in 1971. Harris was listed of the American Stock Exchange in 1972, and in 1973 became the first casino company to ever be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Bill supposedly died, this could be wrong, on June 13, 1978 due to an erotic aneurysm and cardiac surgery in Rochester, Minnesota. Not two years later, in 1980, Holiday Corporation bought Harris for over $300 million. Bill had almost 7,000 antique cars, and Holiday Corp sold them. The remainder of the collection, a very small percentage of it, is now at the National Auto Museum in Reno, Nevada. The entire collection was very valuable, as selling most of his collection was enough to make all the money back to Holiday. What's now called Caesars Entertainment was initially created in 1990 as The Promise Companies in order to affect the sale of Holiday to Bass PLC. Promise was created as a spin-off company holding Harris, Embassy Suites, Homewood Suites, and Hampton Inn. After a spin-off, Bass bought Holiday, which, after the spin-off, Holiday only owned Holiday Inn. Holiday Inn already owned a casino on the Strip, which went to Promise and was renamed to Harris Las Vegas in 1992. In the late 80s and early 90s, Harris went on a crazy expansion spree due to the growth of casinos and reservations and riverboat casinos being legalized in states that otherwise made gambling illegal. Promise made the choice to spin off its hotel branch called Promise Hotel Corps, which consisted of Embassy Suites, Hampton Inn, and Homewood Suites. The parent company, at this point owning 16 casinos all over the country, was renamed to Harris Entertainment. Harris continued its growing spree over the next 10 years. In 1997, they also launched what they called their Total Gold Loyalty Program, which was renamed to Total Rewards in 2000. It cost $20 million to develop and was the first system-wide comps program of its kind allowing people to earn points at any Harris casinos, which were absolutely everywhere, and redeemed at any Harris for goods and services. This would be one of the biggest reasons for Harris' growth over the coming years. A Harvard Business School professor, Gary Loveman, joined Harris as their new COO in 1998, and would serve as CEO from 2003 to 2015. In 1999, the company moved its headquarters from Memphis to Las Vegas. Harris was still hungry for expansion, so it's made its single largest expansion in 2005 when it bought Caesars Entertainment for $10 billion. The history of Caesars Palace alone is so complicated that it decided to make it its own video sometime in the future. They bought Caesars mostly because MGM bought Mandalay Resort Group. Remember that from last time? Both sides sold several properties so the antitrust people wouldn't come after them. After the buyout, Harris Gonings grew to 40 casinos and 4 cruise ship casinos. They also let Harris buy more properties on the Strip, where Caesars owned 4, and apparently helped them market to high rollers. In 2005, Harris wanted to go international, agreeing to joint ventures in Spain, Slovenia, the Bahamas, and trying to get a license in Singapore. None of these projects were ever actually completed. Instead, Harris bought London Clubs International in 2006 and the Macau Orient Golf Club in 2007. For five years, from 2005 to 2010, Harris conquered a long slice of the east side of the Strip, buying Bourbon Street, Imperial Palace, Barbary Coast, and Planet Hollywood along with a bunch of land behind them. In 2005 and 2006, Harris closed two casinos, the Flamingo Laughlin and the Grand Casino Gulfport, due to damage from Hurricane Rita. At some point, Loveman decided to listen to some private equity tycoon named David Binderman about potentially spinning off Harris Real Estate as a separate investment trust, hoping to get the higher price-to-earnings ratio of hotels compared to casinos. In 2006, they eventually started talking about one of Binderman's other companies called TPG Capital about buying Harris. But another equity firm called Apollo Global Management approached Loveman about buying Harris. Loveman told him to go talk to TPG. Harris got split in half, with the two companies buying the company for $17.1 billion in cash as well as $10 billion in assumed debt. They finished the transaction in early 2008, leaving Harris with $25 billion in debt. In previous years, it was widely known that Harris wanted to implode a bunch of properties and build new ones on the graves of the deceased. But after the whole 2008 fiasco, Harris decided they weren't good enough to build major resorts, so they renovated them instead. They called it Project Link, announced in 2009, which would call for the retaining and improving of existing buildings, while building about 20 restaurants and bars in the alleyway between Imperial Palace, Oshis, and the Flamingo on the east side of the Strip. They pretty much wanted to build a mall between their casinos, since they saw that 
kind of entertainment area had cropped up in other cities such as LA and New Orleans, but the strip was lacking it. It would also provide competition for Fremont Street. Now on to arenas. The Anschutz Entertainment Group was the first to attempt to build an arena in Vegas in association with Harris. In 2007, they announced they would create a joint venture to build a 20,000-seat stadium behind Bally's and the Paris, finally putting their land to good use. Caesars had previously wanted to build a baseball stadium on the same land, but Harris put that to an end when they bought them out. Through the next year, Harris got suspicious on actually making the stadium, thinking that AEG would not split the cost, and whether building a major league stadium with no league to play in it would be possible during the financial crisis. They initially wanted to break around in 2008 and finish by 2010. But by 2009, it was revealed that they hadn't done a traffic study, despite being right on a busy intersection. In 2010, they decided to build behind Imperial Palace. Though, given that funding would require the area to be a special taxation district and Clark County opposing the project due to its use of public funding, stalled the project further. By 2012, AEG completely backed out. Soon after, MGM Resorts came up with their own project using land behind the New York, New York, and Monte Carlo. AEG liked this plan since it didn't rely on public funds. In August of 2010, Harris announced it would run casinos in Cincinnati and Cleveland, Ohio, which were to open in 2012. In November of 2010, Harris canceled plans for an initial public offering, but they did go through with the name change from Harris Entertainment Incorporated to Caesars Entertainment. They officially changed by late November 2010. Apparently, the Caesars brand was more recognized than the Harris brand. In May of 2011, Caesars, via Harris, bought Play Tika for between $80 million and $90 million. It was later bought out in June of 2016. A Chinese consortium, which includes Jack Ma's Young Fang Capital, agreed to buy Play Tika from Caesars for $4.4 billion. They eventually did an IPO anyways, and in 2012 traded on common stock on the NASDAQ under CZR. In late 2014, Caesars Entertainment announced they would buy, and get this, Caesars Acquisition Company. Apparently, each shareholder would receive 0.6 shares in Caesars Entertainment for every share they owned in CAC. In 2015, their casino operation unit called Caesars Entertainment Operating Company Incorporated and about 170 of its subsidiaries filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2015. Their parent company, Caesars Entertainment, did not file for bankruptcy protection. The investors in the operating group initiated litigation against the parent company for their debt guarantees. In November of 2015, Rock Gaming began assuming control of the Horseshoe in Cleveland, the Horseshoe in Cincinnati, and Thistletown Racito from Caesars, and completed the transaction by June of 2016. In November of 2017, it announced that it would sell Harris Las Vegas to Vichy Properties, a spin-off of the bankruptcy, but Caesars would keep operating it. On the same exact day, they announced that they would buy Senatar Gaming. They're also building a convention center in Las Vegas called Caesars Forum.